Hi guys, my name is Mimo and I'm a culinary producer here at Tasty. My background is in pastries. One of my favorite things to bake are brownies. Brownies are so great because they're fudgy, they're rich, they're chocolatey, and they're that sweet place between a cake and a cookie. I know we're all busy and you might think you don't have time to make dessert, but today I wanna to show you how to make a four minute, 40 minute, and four hour brownie. So let's do this. Our first recipe is really easy and comes together just in four minutes. So first I'm gonna add my butter into my chocolate chip and put this in the microwave to melt everything together for 30 seconds. And now we just patiently wait. And now I'm gonna dump my melted chocolate into this bowl. Then I'm gonna whisk my sugar and my egg. This is just one of those recipes when you're watching a movie and you crave a dessert, but you don't wanna put in the effort. So you just go and whip it up really fast with minimal ingredients. And now I'm gonna sift in my cocoa powder. I like sifting it because I want it to be all smooth. And then we're gonna use a rubber spatula and mix it in there. I love how shiny it is. This is definitely gonna be fudgy. And now for an extra added chocolate flavor, we're adding chocolate chips. I picked semi-sweet chocolate because it's the perfect bitterness and doesn't add too much sweetness to the dessert. Our batter is ready, and now I have this microwave-safe Pyrex dish. I've greased it and lined it with parchment, and now we're gonna add the batter into it. We're gonna use an offset spatula to smooth it all out. That way it's beautiful. If you don't have an offset spatula, feel free to use the back of a spoon. Smoothing it out also helps your brownie bake evenly. I saved a little bit of chocolate chip to sprinkle on top just for the aesthetic. It doesn't hurt to have more chocolate, so go crazy. That took about two minutes to put together, and now we're gonna put it in the microwave for two minutes. And now we patiently wait. It smells so good. I think our brownie's all ready. I'm gonna cut this in half, but no judgment. If you don't wanna share with anybody, you've worked hard for four minutes, so feel free to enjoy all by yourself. Look at that. Look at all that melted chocolate, fudgy center. And it's that simple, four minutes, and you have a beautiful dessert. And now let's taste this brownie. Mmm, this is so good. And for something you made in four minutes, oh my gosh, I don't think you have to tell anybody it was microwaved. You can just tell them you spent hours making this. <laughs> this is good but I wanna show you something even better. So let's go make our 40 minute brownie. This is a pretty standard recipe with minimal ingredient. First, we're gonna sift our flour and cocoa powder. I'm also gonna sift our baking powder. I love sifting the dry ingredients because it helps me not over mix my batter and it creates a very smooth, consistent batter for the brownie. And now we're gonna give this just a nice little whisk. And then set your bowl aside and we're gonna start with the big bowl. I'm gonna add my eggs, and then now I'm gonna add my sugar, and we will whisk this together. This looks good, and now I'm gonna slowly add my hot butter. The reason you wanna do it slowly is you don't wanna scramble your eggs. This is called tempering, and that is bringing everything up to temperature slowly. This is looking beautiful. And now we're gonna add our salt into this. The reason I didn't mix my salt with the dry ingredient is because the salt crystals are too big and usually get stuck in the sifter. And now we're gonna add our dry ingredients and we're gonna use our rubber spatula to fold it in. And again, we don't wanna overmix. The reason is we're looking for a fudgy brownie and we don't want rubber. Again, I'm turning my bowl the opposite direction as I fold it. Now we're gonna add our semi-sweet chocolate chip. I like semi-sweet because it's a perfect balance between sweetness and bitterness. I'm just not a sweet dessert person. I like the perfect balance. Our brownie batter looks beautiful and I have an eight by eight baking pan here. It's greased and lined with parchment. Now we're gonna add our batter into the pan. What I love about this recipe is it's so fudgy. Again, we're gonna use an offset spatula, my best friend, to smooth it all out. I'd make these brownies if I want to make something special but also feeling lazy at the same time. So I think it would impress people but it's not show stopping. This looks good, let's go put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. My brownies are done, I've let mine cool for a little bit. You are more than welcome to eat them right away, but if you wanna get this perfect square, let it cool and it will cut beautifully. This recipe makes nine perfect squares. Let's see how these look inside. Look at that fudgy brownie with chocolate pockets. I have my milk, let's try this. Not a good brownie. This one's fudgier than the last brownie. It has a nice chew and it just melts in your mouth. This one is really good, but if you're a chocolate lover, let's get into the next one. To get started on our four hour brownie, we're gonna brown some butter. I like to brown my butter in a light pan, 
That way I can see the milk solids browning. I'm using two sticks of butter because I want more flavor in it. I want more fat. I want it to be decadent. I want it to be show stopping. When you're browning butter, you always wanna do it on low heat and constantly stir. So what you're seeing over here are the milk solids and this is what you want to brown. So we want this to sink to the bottom and that's what's gonna give you the deeper, nuttier flavor. Just don't rush it, take your time. You don't wanna burn it. Also, like who doesn't wanna take a break while they're cooking and just stir butter? As soon as you see the brown bits, you wanna quickly remove it from heat and put it in a different container because you don't wanna overcook it. While our brown butter is still hot, we're gonna mix it with our sugar and adding hot butter into your sugar is gonna give your brownie the beautiful shiny exterior. In my opinion, this makes a great dessert right here. We can just stop now and call this dessert. We're gonna set this aside to cool and we're gonna pull an espresso shot because we're fancy like that. I like to add coffee to my chocolate desserts because it just helps enhance the chocolate flavor. But if you don't have an espresso machine, don't worry because you can add regular coffee, you can add cold brew, you can even add stout. It's just a nice way to add complexity to your dessert. So I'm gonna show you guys how I pull my shot at home. I'm gonna add about 15 grams of espresso. I'm gonna use my knife and brush it off. I'm gonna use this little guy to push the coffee be down. Now I'm gonna attach this to the machine. Now we pull. We're looking for only two ounces. All right, we got two ounces of espresso. Let's get back to our batter. So next we're gonna add our egg star sugar. I like to add it one at a time, that way it's well incorporated. So we're gonna mix this for about two to three minutes until it gets lighter in color. And this helps us get air into the batter. Next we're gonna add our espresso, vegetable oil, and vanilla extract. Our wet ingredients are all ready, so now we're gonna sift our dry ingredients. Now we're gonna sift together our flour, cocoa powder, and baking powder. Again, we sift because we wanna break up these lumps. If you don't have a sifter, you can just get a whisk and whisk everything very well. We can add our salt. If the time commitment makes you scared, honestly, just give it a try. I promise this recipe is not that hard. Now we're gonna add our dry ingredient into our wet ingredient and slowly fold it. And again, I'm turning my bowl the opposite direction as I fold in the wet ingredient into the dry. It's almost mixed, but not quite. But I'm gonna add my chocolate now because I wanna stop mixing it right when everything's incorporated and I don't wanna over mix it. In this bowl, I have a mixture of semi-sweet chocolate and milk chocolate. And I'm gonna set some chunks of chocolate aside because we're gonna use them as garnish. And I've broken them up into different sizes because I just want big chunks of chocolate. I want little melty chocolate. So the milk chocolate is gonna help balance the bitterness of the dark chocolate. Now I'll add my batter into my eight by 12 prepared baking pan. Look at all that chocolate. There's like half a pound of chocolate in here. Again, we're doing the same thing, spread it using an offset spatula. This is a recipe you wanna make if you wanna feel fancy and if your friends love chocolate, like me. Last thing we're gonna do is garnish it with our chocolate. I want it to look perfect and rustic at the same time. You gotta find that balance. And now comes the secret. We are gonna chill this for two hours. And you thought you were gonna work for four hours, but there's a lot of downtime in this recipe. Chilling it for two hours helps develop the flavors. It gives it a shiny top. You can even leave it in the fridge overnight if you want, but we're not that extra. All right, I'm gonna go put this in the fridge and relax for two hours and I'll be right back. We're back, it's been chilling for two hours. You can already see the difference. The batter is more firm. There's shine into it, so it's ready to be baked. I'm gonna go bake this at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. I know it's been a long time, but I promise it's worth the wait. Our four hour brownies out of the oven. I've let it cool for almost an hour and we're at the finish line. But before we cut into it, I wanna sprinkle some sea salt. I'm gonna cut this into eight generous pieces. I'll start in the middle. She cuts so beautifully. I can hear the crunch on the top and feel the gooiness of the middle. This is a very generous piece and anyone who's spent four hours making a brownie deserves it. Let's check one of the pieces. Look at the middle, it looks perfect. It's dense, it's chocolatey. I cannot wait to try it. This is definitely my favorite. The hints of the salt on the top, the mixture of the milk chocolate, everything. It's just perfectly balanced. I definitely recommend leaving it in the fridge for two hours because it makes a difference. All right, that's it. Today we made a four minute, 40 minute, and a four hour brownie. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Just remember, there's always time for brownies. I hope you like this a chocolate. Katie's making me say this. <laughs> Bye guys.